Dolores Cannon spoke about how many souls volunteered to come to this planet because a call was sent out for help by Mother Earth, or as Flat Earthers would call her, Mother Pancake or Mother Flapjack. Too early for Flapjacks? Most people watching this video are most likely volunteer souls, and despite the chaos, we're all trying to lift the collective consciousness out of the darkness that has infested this pancake. I mean planet. Now that we're all here, did you ever question yourself as to why we would agree to experience suffering? Even if you're not personally suffering, can you feel the suffering of others as an empath? I know everyone listening to this podcast has been through a lot. One thing I don't fear is death. When I was a kid, that was the number one thing I did fear, dying. Somebody once said one of the most profound things I've ever heard. Once the sperm fertilizes the egg, you begin the dying process. You were alive before that. And it's so true. There's nothing to fear in death and dying. But it just seems that everything that we do or experience in, in this world involves some sort of suffering. Why would we agree to come here just to suffer, you know? I mean, something even as simple as going out for pizza, right? All right, you know that the, the dough is made with GMO flour, wheat, gluten, processed cheese. The tomatoes are probably GMO tomatoes that are in the sauce. We're poisoning ourselves. And not only that, we're willingly paying to do that because, you know, you got to pay for the exchange of energy. I want the energy of this poison pizza. So here's, you know, three bucks or whatever. This isn't the way it was supposed to be. It, this was supposed to be something much greater and that maybe we were tricked in coming here. And it's not as much as being tricked either. I know many of us, as what Dolores Cannon said, many of us heard the call and knowing because many of us have been here before knowing despite what this is all about we still came here boy are we gluttons for punishment <laughs> what's wrong with us <laughs> but here we are so it's a very important time we're in right now and there's many souls that are coming in right now to be here for it they volunteered to come they were, the call went out throughout the universe, volunteers to come and help. They have to be souls that are pure, that have not known violence, have not have no karma to repay, to come in and help raise the consciousness of those who are here. And these people don't know they're one of these. I find it out in my work, but they have no idea on the conscious level they are one of these who has volunteered to come and to use their energy to help raise the consciousness of the world. And ultimately, it's really not as bad as what it seems. If you were to pay attention to what the news is putting out there, you'd think that this world is going to hell in a handbasket. But when we agreed to come here, we, when we heard that call, the beckoning of Earth, Earth was in trouble, we had to come. And when we got here, we forgot a lot of things. We forgot what it was like to forget, to have our memories and our past lives erased. And fortunately, many of us can recall some past lives, one, two, or more. I know of three of my past lives. I have an MP3 where you can, you, you listen to this MP3 at night as you're about to go to bed, and it triggers a past life that you've had in your dreams. So all you got to do is go to in5d.com, go to the search bar and just type in MP3. That's all you got to do. And it should be the first result that comes up in your search results, 100% free. So try it out, see what you get. The Hopi are correct when they said, you are the light at the end of the tunnel, basically. We are the ones that we have been waiting for is what they said, but you can almost turn it around into that. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. We are the light at the end of the tunnel. We are the ones we have been waiting for. It's ridiculous to give that energy away. And it makes you wonder, why am I here? Why, why do I keep... Almost sometimes you almost wonder in the opposite direction, you know, are they just keeping me here so they can continue to drain my battery? Because I'm such of a, just like you and everyone listening right now, you are very high powered vibrational beings. 
much more than the average person who's had that their luge basically sucked out of them. But here we are, we're doing our work. We're staying centered, we're staying grounded, building that chi, that inner chi, that inner light. And it makes you wonder, are they keeping us here just so they can milk that a little bit more? But I don't think so. I think there's a much greater reason. And it's for a positive reason. When we were back on the other side with source, life seemed so easy. We had the answers to all universal questions and lived in the complete vibration of love. There was no dissension, hatred, ego, or financial concerns, just love. So if everything was perfect, why would we want to leave? <laughs> what was wrong with us? What were we thinking? You know, there's you're living in a period without time. There's no illnesses. You don't have to sleep. Total unconditional love everywhere. That must have been one heck of a beacon to bring us here. This one call, you know, heck of a call from Mother Earth to say, hey, I need help. I need you here. We all got that call. Here we are. <sighs> People that have had a near-death experience, they explain when they go over to the other side, they're back in that love of creator, source, universe. They don't want to come back, even when they have loved ones and family and children here they don't want to come back when they're on the other side so many of them have said it's like walking in molasses down there i don't want to go back and now that we're here walking in that molasses we totally understand what they're saying after being in this vibration for many years you forgot what it was like to live in a third dimensional vibration yet you were fortunate enough to have been here in at least one other previous incarnation. And you remembered how your spiritual progression was raised exponentially by being in a world of duality. Most of us are service to others people. We want to help. And when you're on the other side, you're really not helping other people. You're still working on your spiritual progression. You're learning things that'll bring you up higher and higher on the other side of the veil, but you're not getting that those important lessons of what we're learning here in this third dimensional reality. We're able to affect so many other people on a positive level despite all the crap, despite the ordo ab chao, the order out of chaos that's going on around us, we can still make a positive impact on other people. You forgot probably too, what it was like to do simple things that we, we do here on this planet, food, relationships, certain things that, you know, on the other side, you don't need to eat. You probably aren't having the physical kind of relationships that we have here in third dimensional reality, but certain things that we forgot about Maybe we wanted to experience what a great meal tasted like, or what it would be like to prepare a great meal for somebody else or to build something for somebody else. You know, you're thinking, you know, I want to help other people. And because Earth is, has this call right now, I got to come down and I got to help. And that's what we're doing. Every one of these situations that we talked about gave us a chance to learn and grow spiritually. For a while, you simply forgot how these challenges would benefit you. You knew that at some point in this incarnation, you would awaken to find your true self along with the purpose for being here. It seemed so easy on the other side when we were back with Source. You wanted to make millions and millions of soul contracts because they all seem so easy to achieve while you are in the presence of Source. Instead, you listened to Source and ended up making thousands of soul contracts, which all seemed achievable in this lifetime. Some of these soul contracts involved people who you would only meet for a brief minute, but somehow they changed your life or you changed theirs. They helped to lead you back to your path of enlightenment or vice versa. When you were on the other side of the veil, you knew literally millions and millions of people throughout all of your incarnations and all the people you've met. You know every one of them by name personally and you made millions of soul contracts with each one of them because you thought when you're on the other side of the veil anything's possible i can do this piece of cake millions what give me a trillion i can handle that and we get here and we forgot that our memory got wiped and we don't recognize all these people that we made soul contracts with but on a higher level you do recognize these people for example if you have a car have you ever been driving and you let somebody into traffic it might be something as simple as that you might have at some point on a, on a higher level, when you were making your soul contract with that person said, if our paths ever cross, remember me. So there's a person that needs to get out in traffic. You just wave them on and you don't think twice about it on a higher level. You already knew that person. Hey buddy, where's my thank you wave? And that might be the only time your paths literally cross. You were best friends with them on the other side of the veil. You might go to a grocery store, bump into somebody and have a small conversation with that person. That's yet another person on your soul contracts that you agree to meet with the cashier that you enter have an, have an exchange with once again, same thing. 
Did you ever see someone for the first time and just know that you've known this person from somewhere? How do I know you? That kind of thing. Chances are you did know this person when you were back with Source on the other side of the veil. That's that familiarity that we have when you feel that with somebody else. Don't I know you from somewhere? Chances are many of you already know me or knew me before you ever saw me or you saw a video that I had or something and you're like, I know him just like I know you. You also wanted to come back to be part of the Great Awakening and the shift in consciousness. We're at a point in time where our planet is completing a 26,000 year cycle called the precession of the equinoxes. We're also at the end of the greatest cycle in which our solar system has completed its revolution around the sun and its sun in Sirius. And you said to yourself, there's no way I'm gonna miss out on this being here for the, the end of that cycle. Besides, you forgot what it was like to experience duality and polarity. In the end, this shithole has been an amazing experience filled with an abundance of opportunities for spiritual growth. And it's through that spiritual growth that we not only help ourselves, but help others, as well as the collective consciousness of Mother Earth. Everything you do, every thought you have, sends ripples of energy throughout the universe. Each act of kindness, each ripple of positivity is a beacon in the darkness and a song in the storm. Let your heart be your compass, your intuition, your guide. Together, we are the light workers, the weavers of a brighter future for Mother Earth. In this crazy adventure that we call life, remember why you volunteered. We chose this path, not for the suffering, but for the growth, for the love, and for the chance to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd like to thank everyone who has helped to support my work on Patreon. Please join me there at patreon.com slash n5d and get a shout out on upcoming N5D production videos as well as being listed on our wall of gratitude featured on N5D.com. And if no one told you this yet today, please allow me to be the first. You are loved. You are appreciated. Thank you for your service to humanity. Until the next time, much love from my heart to yours. Take care everyone and take care of each other.